Now, as you guys know, Bloodshot was in theaters for about a week or so before all theaters in the country got shut down. We actually weren't able to see it in theaters, but we did buy it on video on demand and both of us watched it. I personally already gave my thoughts on the channel. So Tim, I want you to go first. What do you think or what did you think about Bloodshot? Oh, man. Well, I mean, to be fair, you only gave a spoiler free version of your that, that is true. Yeah. So we're, we're both going to be we're, so to, to preface going in, we're going to talk openly about the film. So if you have not seen the Bloodshot movie, uh, this is your spoiler warning. We're going to just talk freely about it. We're not going to be, you know, trying to refrain from spoilers. So uh, if you don't want to, you feel free to skip to the next section until you do. Uh, <clears throat> I will say uh so I know that you were kind of iffy on it. You were kind of down the middle where it was like you didn't love it. You didn't hate it. You kind of mm -hmm. just liked it. It was just there. Um, I was probably a little bit more on the like side than you. Okay. Um, uh, I, I, it was, you know why? Because mm. I, I knew going in, this was not going to be a particularly deep story. Um, they were going to pull from the comics, but it wasn't going to be necessarily spot on. Right. Um, and, they, you know, they were going to take their liberties and things like that. And I'm kind of because Vin Diesel is in the starring role, I was anticipating more. And, I, you know, he's you know, wh whatever you think about his him as an actor, um, he has a lot of sway in the movies that he's in because of the Fast and the Furious franchise and some other things that he's done. So he right. he comes with a lot of weight. So I knew that he was going to be directly involved with the creative development of the film as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I kind of was just anticipating like a fast and the furious version <laughs> sort of a thing of, uh, uh of the, of a superhero movie. Right. And that was probably the one surprise for me. Um, uh, and I think it's the reason why I liked it more than I thought I was going to, um, is the fact that I felt like he wasn't kind of the typical, you know, Dom from, you know, uh, the fast and the furious movies, he had that element to him, but he was also a little bit more vulnerable. He was a little bit more confused. Um, that that whole draw about his wife and him not, you know, them basically telling him that was his wife and the, the, you know that whole dynamic of bloodshot. Um, it was a little bit. I thought it was a little bit a deeper uh, than I thought they were going to go with it, uh, which was for me a nice surprise. But it was also fun. It was a, it was just a fun movie. It wasn't, there wasn't a ton of action. I really thought it was going to be just like nonstop action. Um, it was, a, there was more story than I anticipated, but I thought it was a very fair and fun, uh, initial outing for the Valiant, uh, universe, uh, in, on, you know, in live strat and the, the live action version of, of Valiant stories. Mm -hmm. Um, was it perfect? No. Was there things that, you know, uh, could have been done differently? Sure. Just like every movie, the one big thing, and I don't know how you felt about this. And this was a major disappointment for me was there were no, uh, hints about any other character in for the sure. Valiant universe. There were no Easter eggs. There was no post credit scenes leading up to anything else. There was nothing that told you this is part of a broader universe. And that was a disappointment for me. I was really looking forward to some kind of a hint at either Harbinger or Rye or Exo something. And we didn't get anything. So that's kind of a nitpick, I guess, because this was a bloodshot movie, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. But I, you know, I want to see like we've talked about many times. We're fans of Valiant Comics and Valiant Entertainment uh, here on the show. And uh, we want to see that get developed into an entire cinematic universe. Um, so I think that this was a, a, a good and a serviceable initial outing. And I'm hoping it's good enough uh, to warrant um, either a sequel or moving into the next. Um, and they don't uh, just give up on it or anything like that, especially because it was the worst timing in the history of ever to you know to release your first your debut of of a cinematic universe um you know where it really wasn't even able to have its run in the theaters so i don't even know what the numbers are on the video demand uh, video on demand side uh for it how it's been performing uh i i just hope it's done well enough for them to where they don't just uh you know brush it to the side and and it, and it gets a fair shake and they're able to to expand it further yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, like I said in uh, my spoiler free review, uh, I'm really I'm down the middle with it. Like it's it was it's 
you know, unfortunately for me, it was one of those films that's very forgettable. Like, I don't think, you know, I'll be talking about this movie like a month from now, three months from now, or, or even, you know, it, it, like there were some cool aspects. I did like the fact I thought they handled, you know, his memory and you know, him trying to figure out who he was. And then the twist of, you know, realizing that everything like nothing was what it actually was. He was been his memory kept getting reset from the from the jump. He just right. thought that, you know he had this particular wife and this person killed her and stuff like that. But it was just a narrative that they were using to get him to do what they wanted him to do. So I thought that was handled really well. Uh, some of the action was good too. I liked how, you know, when he would get hit in the face with like a shotgun blast or something, mm-hmm. all the nanites would go out, but then come right back in. So there was cool elements like that and stuff. But overall, you know, I, I felt like it had a lot of cool core bloodshot elements but then on the flip side, there was a lot of things I'm like, oh, but why don't you do this or that? Like, I thought yeah. it was weird. I think I did say this in the spoiler free review uh, that we never really saw a fully realized bloodshot right. where you see his skin turn white and stuff around two or so times in the movie. But it's really brief and stuff like that. And then they never really kind of they sort of explained the glowing thing in the chest because they showed a mouse or a rat. Uh, with it, how it glows, and they're saying that's because it was dying in that area or something like that. Right. So they kind of explained it for this movie universe, which is very different from the comic books, as in the comic books, it's pretty much an open wound in their way of entering in to, you know, put the nanites and stuff in there. So, you know, I don't know. I- again, it's sh- it was just it was just very okay for me. I, I-, I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. And uh, I will say, though, I do think now with all this out of the way and the origin done, I do want to see a sequel for sure. With all that said, I definitely yeah. want to see a sequel. I think now with, you know, the people knowing who the character is and stuff like that, they could run with it um, and kind of go on and hopefully span out to the broader Valiant universe and stuff. I would like to see like Shadow Man and stuff like that, Exo and all that good stuff. But I did think the ending was kind of weird how he was just like normal dude again and they just got like in an rv and left with like his, his new friends now <laughs> yeah um, i mean i mean he wasn't necessarily a normal i mean he was still bloodshot no, he yeah. still was you know full of he was just free of you know the organization it, yeah it, it, it was it definitely i will definitely agree with you it felt like an abrupt ending yeah yeah it, 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 it felt very abrupt and maybe it was just because i'm always expecting like you know because in comic books and even obviously the comic book movies, by the end of the movie, you get like, oh, now this character is Iron Man. Oh, now he is Captain America. Right. And for me, I, I didn't feel like, oh, and now he's bloodshot. I think right. that's what where I'm most torn, where even though, yeah, he had that scene at the end where, you know, he, he's walking, doing that superhero slow motion walk and all the nanites are coming out of him and stuff like that. But I'm like, for some, I guess just the way it happened within the story or the character development, it didn't. It didn't nail it for me. And the expedition, yeah. the, the dialogue, that's the thing that I think took me back a lot as far as they were explaining everything to yeah. you. I said that in the spoiler, my uh, spoiler for you. I was just like, okay, all right. Uh, but I, I want to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and that goes to me. I think, <clears throat> I think that speaks a lot to budget. Um, I gave it a pass. I, you know me. You know mm-hmm. I usually do not give passes to films on that. Right. That's like a that's a big one for me. That's a big no no for Tim mm-hmm. <laughs> when it comes to filmmaking and storytelling is expositional dialogue. Um, with this one, I, like I said, I kind of went into it with the mindset of like this is going to be something where I just turn my brain off. It's going to be shiny objects, and I'm just gonna you know I'm going along for a, just a fun ride of action and so on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, like I said, like a like a, 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 a Fast and the Furious movie is basically how I was looking at it. Um, and it did have a lot of expositional dialogue. I gave it a pass because it very much felt like even in the time and the length of the film, it felt very much like they had a budget they had to work within. And yeah, they, it was, were tr- they, they had a broad story and they didn't know if they were going to get a second shot at it. For sure. So they it had was- to tell a lot of different things. So they took a lot of liberties. I mean, even the way that Vin Diesel looks as Mm -hmm. bloodshot is really different than in the movie or Mm -hmm. in the comics rather. So it's like, there's a lot of differences. And so I think that also contributed to your feeling at the end of the movie where it's like you didn't, when you were looking at him at the end uh, alongside with the abrupt ending um, you're looking at him and he doesn't look like bloodshot at all. Mm -hmm. And it's because we're used to the comic book, comic book iteration of bloodshot and he doesn't look like bloodshot from the comics. It's very sure. much Vin Diesel playing yeah. Vin Diesel's version of Bloodshot. So, you know, Vin Diesel yeah, was it very like, much felt that way. You know, Vin Diesel was like, "I'm not wearing a toupee. You ain't you ain't putting hair <laughs> yeah. on me. Bloodshot's you know, bald now. One hundred percent. That's what it was. 
but you know, it, I, I'll, I'll say with all that though, I don't want to make it seem like I didn't like the movie at all. I'm bashing it. I do think if you like Valiant, um, mm-hmm. which we both do, and uh, lots of people do, obviously the third largest superhero universe in comics, uh, and you like definitely like Bloodshot, it's definitely watch it for sure. Watch it. I think. Oh, if any, definitely. I think if anything, it, I would be upset again if it didn't get a sequel. Because say what you will about it. I think, especially everything going on with the pandemic and the, the the releasing time of it, and even just the movie itself, I think it does deserve a sequel because you know, first movies to characters that no one knows is you have to tell them who the, who this is. You know, right. it's not Batman or Spider Man where everyone knows their origin. No one knows. Most people don't know who the heck Bloodshot is. But so now with this right. out of the way, they could run with it and do all you know the more comic booky stuff and uh, action scenes and start bringing in like uh, XO and Ninjak and all that fun stuff. Yeah, and like I said, that was like my. That's really what I want to see. I want to see them. I want to see them hint at and introduce uh, one or two other characters from the Valiant universe, or at least at the bare minimum, hint at their existence. I just felt like that was such a missed opportunity with this to get people excited about the potential future, um, but also to you know start broadening that awareness because a lot of people, while Valiant is the third largest superhero universe in comics, it's a good deal behind in awareness Marvel and DC still more broadly, I would say, um, well, to the, with the general public. And so you just introducing that awareness of like, hey, this is a character in a broader universe. Um, and I just, I really wish they would have done that. And I'm hoping, um, that we get it in the next iteration of the film. But that's the cool thing with Valiant, right? They're the third largest superhero universe. But with that said, it's still relatively small. Cause you got, you got to remember yeah. like Marvel and DC, like their universes are insane. The X-Men, Fantastic Four, the Avengers, the Inhumans, like there's so many different offshoots where with mm-hmm. like Valiant, there's, you know, there's a, there's a good amount, but it's, you know, you could probably name them all at least and not you know forget a bunch of you know you have like the harbingers and all that stuff like that so i think it would be a nice compact superhero movie universe too where everyone right. could really understand everything and right. not be con- too confused and you don't have to give too much backstory because you know there's not like these 20 different teams and organizations that you have to explain so i think right. that could work to their benefit where everyone could know their universe really quickly get familiar with them and then love them that much quicker i i agree completely And the other thing, I don't know if you got this too, and this is something that I hope they kind of stick with because I felt like it was different, is this this movie and the the direction they went with this and how they're telling their story, at least for Bloodshot, we'll say. And I kind of, like I said, I hope they continue this because it would, I think, separate them from what Marvel has done or what DC is doing, is it had kind of a 90s action movie vibe. Oh, 100%. Which is, I think, sure. why, that's another reason why I think it was kind of, a, it was almost, it almost felt like, it felt like a novelty for me. Like, it, mm-hmm. it, it gave me, like, flashbacks of, like, the action movies that I grew up watching in the 90s, mm-hmm. and that was endearing to me in a way. And so it's not going to probably play the same for everyone. Um, but I really kind of <laughs> hope that they follow that vibe and they stick with that because <laughs> like I said, it's just a totally different tone and it would really separate them and stick with kind of that, like just old school nineties action. It's like you're watching a racer with Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't want them to be like overly cheesy or like just, you know, really generically bad or simple storylines, but just the overall, the overarching tone, I guess you could say, if you For stick sure. with that, I think that could be a really cool uh, change of pace and really separate them from the, from the, uh, the pack. 